I think Ruby was trying to talk. Uh, w were you going to introduce this uh, this evening? Is it evening I'm, yet? It's evening. Afternoon? I was just going to say, I was going to throw a little, hey, y'all. How y'all doing? What is going on? This is my lovely sister, Ruby Red, and I'm Cole Clayton, uh, under the guise of Sniffing Glue 22. What is going on? What's your, How's your week been? Uh, my week's been pretty good, actually. Like, not very eventful, but it was all right. Yeah. You didn't, so you didn't have you like you didn't go party for St. Patty's Day or anything like that? No. No. Uh -uh. You're no. 21. You're young. That's like the prime year. If I don't any. like. I don't like other 21 year olds. I don't like them. <laughs> I don't either. I, I never <laughs> did. So. Wait, I get uh, it. Uh, I did watch a movie this week that. Uh, my manager told me to watch. He's like, it's so good. I want to talk to somebody about it. I need you to watch it. And I'm like, okay. What movie? The Secret Window with Johnny Depp. Okay. Is it new? No, it came out in 2004. You ever seen it? It's a shitty movie. Is it? <laughs> it's shitty. I watched it. I'm like, bro, my manager's got bad taste if he thought this one was a good movie. Like, I under the plot wasn't is, that bad. Is your manager a guy or a girl? He was a guy. Eh. The plot That's, wasn't that bad. What a waste. But like I guessed it halfway through. So I hate if I can already guess a movie. And then the ending was just weird. But that doesn't make it bad though, does it? Is that it why was, you think it's bad because you could guess it? No, that was only part of it. Part of it was because I guessed it, but then the ending, I was like, Are you fucking serious right now? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, y'all didn't have... It, the ending really felt like they ran out of time. And they were like, okay, we gotta get this done. Let's just let's throw it together. I think Johnny Depp regrets that movie. Like, yeah. after watching it, I'm like, ooh. After his marriage? Yeah, there's oh my God. far less things he regrets than that movie. You know what I learned? Far more things, I should say. You know what I learned? That what? was the movie that Heath Ledger was working on when he died. He was working on a lot of movies. He was working on, obviously, The Dark Knight, um, which I think they were just in post-production, so they were mostly done filming. And then there was, like, uh, the the fantastical Professor Ignatius or something like that, where he actually, they only had half of it done. So uh, because he was a wizard in the movie, Heath Ledger, um, mm -hmm. Johnny Depp, uh, Colin Farrell and uh, Jude Law all um, put time in the movie for free, by the way, I believe, mm -hmm. um, to play the same character. And they just wrote in that because he was a wizard, that he was a shapeshifter, too. Like, he could shapeshift in the movie. It was a pretty good movie. You should check it out. Some, some Parnassus cool. or something like that. It was pretty cool. It was Yeah, it was Heath Ledger's last movie. Couldn't finish it, obviously, for obvious reasons. That's what happened. With, that's what happened with the secret window, and Johnny Depp took that role. Yeah, they were very good friends. I did not know that. Yeah, good they were really you. good friends. All the guys that were in that uh, Doctor Professor Parnassius bullshit—they were all good friends. That's why they filled in for him. Nice. Yeah, Heath Ledger was very well connected. Believe it or not, he was a good guy. He seems like a good guy, and I don't know why, but I get the feeling if Heath Ledger had been in that movie, the movie would have been better. No, oh, he's dude, that dude could act his ass off. Like it would have, it would have been a lot better. Honestly. Have you ever seen a Knight's Tale? But, you know, it sounds familiar. I don't think I remember it though. It's about uh, like a jouster, a guy who's pretending to be knighted, and if people find out, he'll be hung. You know, um, but he's making money as a jouster because the guy he was a part of a jousting team, and their jouster drunk drank himself to death. And so they were too broke to just go home, you know. So Heath Ledger's character decided to just put on the suit and start jousting. And he turned out to be really fucking good at jousting. Oh. And yeah, he became like a, fucking super rich in like peasant days. This is in like, you know, like old England, like yeah. with knights I'm gonna and have to, shit. It's pretty good. I'm going to have to watch it. One of, uh, it's one of the first movies I had ever seen him in. Um, and then also there was uh, Ten Things I Hate About You. I'm sure you've seen that. That was a good movie. Love it. Love yeah. it. It's a good movie. Do you see how ugly my fingers are? Like that. 
I can't even roll, bro. You're gonna have to roll, you're gonna have to pre-roll me a bunch of joints when you come up here. Gotcha. Did you just see me just roll this blunt in like three minutes? Yeah, I'm still going, bro. You started before me. <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. You know, I can bust the blunt open with my thumbs. I don't even need a knife. Uh, you're not you're, who the fuck needs a knife? Puss. I don't smoke blunts though. Oh uh, why? But that nicotine in it though? That nicotine? So good. Damn, I don't even like nicotine. I just like smoking. I love it. Love nicotine. It's my best friend. So you, you know, know what? About? You know what else I tried the other day? What? Pickled quail eggs. Pickled eggs are good. But a quail egg? I've never had a quail egg before. I've never had a quail egg. So. Bro, they're so creamy and they're fucking delicious. Like they're, they don't are they like duck eggs, kind of. Yeah, they're like a duck egg. It's so fucking good. Like, first of all, this pickled this pickled quail egg. It's Cajun style, right? When I tell you, if you were to oh, eat this, who's here? It's Cajun style. Who would have guessed? There's so much vinegar. If you were to eat this first thing in the morning, bro, How would it'd you be eat like this a fucking because it would wake you up. Like it would <laughs> fucking. It's like a shock to your equilibrium. Like your whole nervous system is like uh, when you eat it. But the inside is like really just good. Just drink coffee like a normal human being. Y'all are in Louisiana. Y'all got good French roast. It's so sour. Like it makes my face want to like fucking squeeze up. That's weird. Oh, it's so good. I love it. I'm sure, your boyfriend loves that. Shut up, you creep. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are Not weird. I'm weird. Yeah. Why? Because it, it was a funny joke. Get the fuck out of here. <sighs> you get the fuck out of here. I don't talk to me. Are you talking Anymore. To me? <laughs> but anyway, what's been going on with you this week? Okay, so um it's it's pretty well documented. Uh, all over my YouTube and like my, my Facebook and Instagram and stuff. But um, so Dino came to town and, you know, because he, he talked uh, kind of over the last episode that we did a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. um, he came down because he had a he, had, he was headlining for a show. And so he stayed for a week, you know, and we did some uh, cooking and. We went to like Little Italy and tried out all kinds of desserts and pizzas and stuff. Nice. Um, yeah, we had Italian beef. We went and checked out some Cleveland uh, sites, you know, because I'm like pretty much a fucking tour guide at, these days with, with as much Cleveland knowledge as I know. Um, You're gonna be my tour guide when me and my boyfriend come to visit y'all. He's never been to Ohio. <laughs> Ohio is different than Cleveland. I'm tired of people saying, oh, I've never been to Ohio. Cleveland is different. Cleveland is a different place. We're in Ohio technically, but we're not like the rest of Ohio. Ohio is corn fed. Cleveland is culture. Oh, kind of like New Orleans in Louisiana. It's a very similar idea. Yeah. The Although rest of I, still, I still feel like the, uh, the coonassery is, is uh, strong in New Orleans. Dude, a, a dude threw up right beside me one time in New Orleans, and I just kept kept it moving. Keep walking, dodge the throw up, and then some dude called me a fat bitch because he walked up to my friend who looks like she's twelve, by the way. She's eighteen, but she looked twelve, and he was like, "Y'all trying to buy some ecstasy?" I said, "Hell no! Who the fuck are you peddling drugs to children?" And I like kept walking. He's like, "Well, whatever, you fat bitch." All right, okay, but you feel good about that one, huh? Anyway, back to your story. Um, what do we do? Oh yeah, we went to Little Italy. We went, checked out all kinds of good food and saw some sights, and then, um, uh, oh, I made corned beef, like really good homemade corned beef, Ooh, um, for St. Patty's Day. And then we had on St. Patty's Day we had to go. I had to drive him to uh, his show because the show was on St. Patty's Day, which is. To me, the most terrible day to do a show, but 
you know, Dino was getting paid, so fuck it, you know? Um, Half the people there ain't even gonna remember your set, bud. Right. Dino got, Dino got really high and fucked up his set anyway, so it's not like it. Like, he totally was just not giving a fuck. But to be fair, I think I started him not giving a fuck. Um, Because when we got there, uh, the producer slash comic, um, I'm not going to name any names. Just, you know, really just say say fit. Honestly, I could care less about me, but just I don't want everybody going around thinking he was a bitch. But I mean, some people will know. Some people were there. But regardless, um, I like how whenever his fault spins dramatically. Like, um, okay, so we pulled up, right? It's already snowing. I'm already irritated because it's snowing uh, in the middle of fucking March. It's supposed to be spring, though, right? Yeah. Um, I just drove half an hour because it's on the west side. We get there, and oh boy, the producer, uh. Opens my door and lets Dino out. And is like, oh, I'm going to take you to the green room or whatever. And he's like, Cole, I need you to go park somewhere else. And I'm like, why? Like, he was like, oh, because, and mind you, we're on time. Like, we're here. They said the door's open at 630. We're here at 635. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so the show starts at 7. Like, we're here on time. We're not early, early. You know, we're on time. We're here Chit chat and bullshit and get prepared like comedians are supposed to. I'm always one of those on time comedians. I always have been. A lot of comedians show up late as fuck. Some comedians show up when the show's already started. You know what I mean? I fucking can't stand that. Um, but regardless, he's like, I need you to go park somewhere else. So I asked, I'm like, why? And because now and it let me let me fill in some blanks for you with this guy. Okay. This guy talks down to me. I've known this guy for like three years. I've dealt with him a lot. We used to be friends, but we stopped being friends because he talks to me like however he wants to talk to me. You know, he doesn't just do it to me. It's not like he's singling me out. He does it to everybody. He, I don't know if he's just socially retarded or what, but he does not like he does not mince his words. And I get that I'm kind of like that too, but I kind of go for the humorous aspect when I speak. Everybody knows that when I speak, I speak for a dramatic flair. He just says some fucked up ass shit. And I'm like, I can't deal with this guy no more. Like, I can't fuck with him no more. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I've told him on many occasions, watch the way you speak to me. Watch the way you speak to me. You know what I mean? Um, I almost beat his ass last time I seen him. And I told him that on, on Sunday, okay? Last time, um, I wasn't on the show, okay? Atlas came to town. He's another comedian, kind of like Dino, that I deal with, and we do shows together. He's on my... He, Atlas Novak is uh, my co-host to Last Minute History every other Monday, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And Atlas came to town. He was headlining, and it was the same same thing with his show. And um, Ryan, he put me on the show because some comedian didn't show up and I didn't really want to go up anyway. I was kind of already in the, I don't really want to do comedy much more anyway, but I went in, went up and bombed like mother. Cause I didn't have anything prepared. Right. Um, and then I get off and Ryan's like, Hey, next time I need you to sell tickets, blah, 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 blah. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I wasn't on this show, and I didn't even know about it. You never came up to me and talked to me about it, or I would have, because that's the guy. Even if I wasn't on the show, I would have pushed it for you, because that's the kind of guy I am. I push my homies um, stuff. I just do. That's who I am. You know what I mean? Because it, in my personal opinion, I'm not trying to, like, pat myself on the back, but I'm a very good marketer, okay? I'm a very good – I have I have – very good marketing skills, not like that, but like uh, I'm kind of a nobody and can still uh, I still have a name, you know, I still have a namesake. OK, I'm yeah. I'm nobody. But like the na my name is becoming recognizable. And you've got good people skills, too. I'll give you that. Like you have better people skills than all the rest of your siblings. Dude. Well, yeah, because I fucking went to school. <laughs> Just rub, no it in, rub it in. Rub it in. Yeah. Um. But yeah, anyway, that I, I kind of got, I started to fucking start talking shit to him, and he kind of just walked away, wasn't really paying attention. And then another 
buddy of ours, a mutual friend, Marco, pulled me away and we smoked weed. And he's just like, don't, don't worry about that, man. He's just, that's how he is. He needs to work on it. And I'm like, well, he they needs to work on it. I'm going to beat his he ass next time. He's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, if he does that again to me, I'm going to fucking fight him. And Marco was like, yeah, you know, whatever. It is what it is. So, well, well two years later, uh, present day, Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, this most recent St. Patrick's Day. Again, he opens the door, lets you know, out. he's like, I need to go park somewhere else. And I'm like, I'm already, okay, you know, so this is build, building up, right, for many, many years. I've known this guy, he was the guy who gave me my first stand-up show. So I've known this guy since the moment I was a stand-up comedian, right? He opens the door, and it's like, hey, do you know how you doing, blah, 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 blah. good to see you, da, 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 da. he looks over at me, doesn't say hi, doesn't say, how you, how are you doing, I haven't seen you in a while, because I haven't seen him in two years. And the first thing he does is, I need you to go park somewhere else. So I'm like, why? He's like, well, because the, the 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 crowd isn't all here yet, um, and we don't have enough parking, so I need you to go park somewhere else. Yeah, but right I'm here. Yeah, I, I already know we what you're gonna say. Let me park right there because, first of all, good to see you again. How have you been? <laughs> yeah, how's your night going? Oh, I'm doing good. Okay, that's normal conversation. And then it's not always what you say; it's how you say it. If that's exactly what I'm trying to, to put together. If he pulled you to the side and said, "Hey, man." It's good to see you. Um, I'm having a little concerns about your parking. Would you mind moving for me? Is that something you could do like in like next 30 minutes when we start getting busy? Great. Have a good rest of your night. That was all it would have fucking took. Yeah. But the he just said, man, to me, man, I know I know you're chauffeuring Dino and all that, but to make it a good a good show, I'm trying to, you know, um limit where the comics park, you know, everything. Can you Park somewhere else, you know, just anything, anything. Better yeah, than he did it. And he, yeah, that's so he just was like, Yeah, I need you to move, blah blah blah. And I was like, I don't understand why I have to move, you know, because now I'm just hard, being hard headed, you know. So I'm yeah, like, now, I was now, just, now I'm gonna fuck with you. Now yeah. I'm gonna fuck with you. You wanna be rude? I'm, we can get fucking rude. We can do it, bitch. And then he, he did the whole, Come on, man. And I was like, I was here first. <laughs> like, fuck everybody else. What's one spot going to make a difference? And then he just said, just do it. And slammed my car door. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd have beat his yeah. ass right there. I'd have beat his ass right there because I tell you fucking what? That's my fucking property. You just fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so what I did was whip out of there real quick, go find some parking, and I came walking back. And he's standing. He's he's standing outside by himself in the parking lot, calling me, calling me, because he thinks I left. Wow. Grayson, Grayson's right there, by the way. Grayson, it's just me and Grayson. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking, fuck, I'm about to fight somebody, and Grayson's gonna get involved. Like, no jumping, Grayson. If Clay gets into a fight, you do not jump in. You let him fight. He don't need help. If you need a one-on-one, -on -one, go one-on-one. -on -one. Do not jump people. That's not okay, cool. Okay, so anyway, he, he sees me. And he's like, hey, man, I just wanted to. I'm like, no, 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 no. Shh, shh, shh. Hush. Hush. Okay. The first thing I need from you is an apology. Um, And I'll let everything for the last four years go. Or three years or however long it's been. Um, And we can move on. And you can show some respect going forward. Mm-hmm. Or I, I can just be the country fuck and shove my boot in your ass. Like, and he put his hand on my shoulder. Oh, yeah? Right yeah, then. Right and he was like, know, look, and he said, listen, man. So I fucking pushed him. I pushed yeah. him. I was like, ah, don't touch me. And he was I like, whoa, 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 Hold up. Hold up. You're going to get mad at me because I asked you to move. I was like, no, 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 no. 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 See, now I know you're not going to apologize. And that's not why I'm mad. That's not even why I'm mad. I'm mad because... You talk to me any type of way and think you can fucking do whatever the fuck you want. You slam my car door, go fuck yourself. Like we're about to, we're about to go now. Like I have to fucking fight you. Like that you don't yeah, know no respect. So now I have to in. teach you a lesson. And he started. Yeah. A car pulled up right by us because we were standing in a parking spot. Car pulled up and they were they rolled their windows down. And I guess they knew Ryan. They were about to talk to him. It was like a couple or something like that. Um. So Ryan starts to walk away to look at them and talk, and I fucking shoved him almost to the fucking ground. I was like, don't walk away from me. And, <laughs> and he, like, looked at me, like, um, like, appalled. Like, he was like, you just, 
yeah, motherfucker. And then that's when everybody came out outside and started to like kind of like break it up or whatever. Break and, it up. Break it yeah. up. We didn't even start it yet. <laughs> we ain't even, we're not even done yet because I couldn't right. fucking yeah, so, you right when you touched my shoulder and I did. Because he knew, because I, because he didn't try to like come, when I pushed him hard and he almost fell to the ground and he didn't co immediately come up swinging, I'm like, this motherfucker's gonna call the cops. You know what I mean? Did. Yeah. So I just kind of left it. What are you two talking about? I'm talking about a, uh, um, an incident, a, an incident, when not really a fight, fight where somebody, you know, crossed the line and I had to. Put it, this is over this weekend. I had to, I had to, I had to handle it. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, fighting's bad." Blah 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 blah. And I don't. And that's the that's the crazy part is I'm not the hothead of my family. But you're not. You've never even <laughs> been to a fight. This is actually the closest you've been to a fight, right? I mean, I've been in fights, but they were always with family. Is the funny yeah, part? That's you what know, I mean. Like, like a real fight, like with yeah, their I've never been in a fight with somebody else. Let alone started one. Like I, I guess I didn't start it, but I was like the initiator of the 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 contact. I guess. Yeah, you know, you know, you're pretty chill. Shoulder. He touched your shoulder. Now, you said he what? He touched your shoulder. He initiated straight up. You could have punched him right then and there. I mean, he did. He touched my shoulder. He, no one's he allowed to put their hands on you. I mean, he he touched my shoulder because he wanted to like. I don't care. I guess, really, honestly, in my opinion, manipulate me. But um, you know how I, I get triggered by that shit quickly. Um, but yeah, and then every it kind of all broke up and stuff, and nothing ha happened after that. But you know, there there were people like heckling him because he was the host of the show for the night, and people were like, "Oh, you know, after the show, you you got." They were like, "You know, it's almost time you're gonna go get your be ass beat in the parking lot." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> So it kind of became oh, the joke of the night, really, for the most part. Um, oh, I bet you he was so embarrassed the whole night because they kept talking about it. Like, I'm sure he didn't want to talk about I mean, it. I mean, making jokes about it, too, mind you. Don't don't get me oh, wrong, but right? he made it oh, up okay. we did. Okay. But uh, everybody was making jokes about it. And then when it time came, I it was time for me to leave. I was going to go get my car. I was just getting out of here. Like I said, I, I, wasn't even, I didn't even really want to be at the show anymore at that point. But I was there for Dino because I had to drive him home anyway. Right. But um, he was standing by the door, by the front door, like, I guess, like, telling people goodbye and stuff. You know what I mean? And I had to, like, walk right by him to, to get outside. And we were so close that our shoulders touched. And he just looked away from me. <laughs> He was not about that life, Clay. He was, that was not a fighter right there. That was someone who was used to talking shit to people and not getting their ass beat. Yeah, man. That is exactly what that was. Like, that is someone who's never been knocked the fuck out because you say too much bullshit thinking you can't get knocked. Because everyone wants to fucking call the police. Oh. I'm going to call the police. Like, if you tip me, I'm going to call the police. Well, then don't say stupid shit. Don't be stupid. You want oh, to that's what I told him. I told him in the fight oh, or the fight where I was like, I'm I'm gonna have to go to jail tonight, aren't I? Like, <laughs> right, I was like not, what? No, like, you know, I'm not con condoning violence. I don't believe you should like hurt someone. Like, I think you should definitely be able to tell when it's time to break up a fight. Like, you know, don't keep hitting someone if they're down. Type shit. You know, don't jump people. I'm down with that. But straight up, if you say some fuck shit, slap you right in the fucking face, and you can I, slap me back. You gotta control your you. You gotta control your emotions and not put your hands on people i'm in but that was one of those things that like had been building for years he you know what i mean first was the thing he he put his hands on your property he slammed well, that property. was not a, that was just to me that was like a not reading the room situation you know what i mean you know because like you yeah. said he put his hand on my shoulder in a you know in a like like this it was like you know oh let me talk to you you know what i mean like let me let me connect with you for a second i don't fuck with that he wouldn't know that because I have been manipulated um, in, in uh, but like, I was in a seven-year relationship where I was constantly, hey, listen to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm about to fuck up your life some more. Listen to me. You know what I mean? That, and that's how I always perceive that. So I don't like it when people touch me. All right? And then I was already pissed. And then for four years, this dude talks to me however the fuck he wants. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of was just triggered, you know? I'm so, too. 
And honestly, like, I back your actions. I don't think you did anything wrong. But I will say, if you can learn how to, like, verbally embarrass someone you're gonna get a lot more satisfaction out of it instead of becoming aggressive because once you become aggressive people will spin it and make it seem like that's who you are and that's what you do oh yeah i'm sure that my name's getting run all through cleveland the cleveland comedy scene right now but i don't really give a shit now everybody knows not to fuck with me like that you know what i mean everybody knows to watch the the way they speak to me now you know yeah if anything i I didn't just handle him i handled everybody because because comedians Kind of will talk to you any type of way, I have found. You know, because somebody at one point in their life was like, dude, you should be a comedian. And now they think they can say whatever the fuck they want. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think definitely having a filter is very important because you can't just talk to people however you want. Even if you're trying to come off, like, if you're trying to be nice, you know, and stuff like that, then just be nice. But if you're being flat out or if you want to be trying to be funny... Try to be funny, but if you're being flat out fucking rude and disrespectful, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. Because I know what I'm being rude and disrespectful. And I try not to do it. I know what I, how I can hurt people's feelings, and I try not to. So right. you can actively be polite. You can have manners. Just because you're a comedian doesn't mean you have to take that shit with you all the time. Okay? I'm so sick of that shit. Yeah, and I'm sick of, honestly, and that was, to me, it was like I was being a man putting another man in his place. You know what I mean? Now, I showed the whole Cleveland comedy scene that I'm not the one to fuck with. Like I said, I just, I didn't just handle one person. I handled everyone immediately. All right, there's a baseline. You can talk to me how you want. And not only that, but, like, I have friends who are comics. Dino's one of them. Marco's another one. The two guys I mentioned tonight. Atlas. Though They can talk to me however the fuck they want. Because we've established that rapport. I can talk to them however the fuck I want. And we and have them. Yeah, and not only that, but they know where the line is. There's there's not a big line with me. There's, like, you just don't talk about my kid for the most part. It's more about your actions. Overall, it's, uh, you can talk about it whatever you want if you're my homie. But if you're not my homie, watch the way you speak to me. All right? Be careful. I don't know mm-hmm. you like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So and it, um, and it, wasn't, it wasn't even just like everything that he said. It was just genuinely the overall disrespect, like the lack the of slamming respect. of my car door. Not even, not even like I thank y'all for coming out tonight. Like how have you been? Everything. Like he clearly has a chip on his shoulder. When the first thing he says to you is, "Can you move your car?" Yeah, That's rude. Like how are you? My doing? car wasn't even off yet. <laughs> like. For all we do, I was planning to move. Like, you know, like... Like, we can have manners. People need to learn how to say please and thank you. And yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Like, that's how I roll. I'm polite. I have manners. I shake people's hand when I meet them. Like, I don't know if that's the thing I'll do up north. (laughs) But, like, we shake shake hands in the south. But firm grip, too. Because if you... if Bro, if you hit me with that fucking... I mean, you're a girl, though. It's the same for women. It's the same for women. Because I met a woman one time. And I went to shake her hand, right? And she she did this. Like, she held, held her hand like this for me to go, like, yeah. you're a pussy. You're yeah, a bitch. She's a princess, you know? That's, like, a, that's, a, that's like a, don't dead limp the handshake. Because I know immediately right then and there who you are. And if you don't make eye contact either, I know wh- I know who you are. No, that's, that's how we are in the town. You ain't got a good and, name. Um, while I have you, go ahead and uh, if you like this, like it and subscribe. I appreciate you. Um, no, the funny part is like Grayson was there. Grayson, I didn't even know Grayson was. I forgot Grayson was there because I half expected Grayson to jump in the middle and then I had to break it up. You know, because you know how Grayson's always like, "Yeah, let's go, let's go." Grayson's always trying yeah. to get him. Grayson was just chilling there, just kind of like, "Why?" He, I asked, I was like, "So what? What was that about?" You were just so chill. He, he was like, "Oh, I was just making sure nobody came up from behind and hit you." Like, <laughs> like I got your just homie, Not gonna lie, I got your was... like I got you. That's a, that's and now, right there. the entire week. The entire week, he's been closing my door. And like it, my door won't close all the way because. And I'm like, dude, what is your deal? Like not putting it together. And he's like, I was trying not to slam your door. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I would say that about Grayson. If you need to beat ass, no questions asked. Grayson's down. Yeah, always. Grayson's the 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 Grayson's Jeremy Renner. 
from uh, the town when Ben Affleck's like, listen, um, we're going to hurt some people. And I need your help. We're going to hurt some people. And I can't have you ask me any questions. And he's like, whose car are we going to take? <laughs> yeah. Grace is exactly like that. He was always down for a fight. Yeah. Yeah. You need people like that, though. You need some people like that. Because every now and then you're like, oh, shit. Like, there's a, there's, there's a couple people here. Like, I might need some backup. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Pretty much. But, you know, like, it's not always good because, like, it got him in some trouble a year or two ago. But, you know, it is what it is. It was a misdemeanor it is, anyway. It is what it is. Like, I don't know, like, what kind of um, uh, crowd that you cater to, like, as far as, like, your, um, your, your fans. But we're on some real ghetto shit. Like, I know a lot of people who, like, get into fights and, like, just ready to turn down, like, been arrested multiple times. And they, they still go to church on Sunday. Like, they're... They're fucking shit up, but they're, like, good people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, like, a bad person, but you're, like, a good person, too. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. Like, like Uncle Brandy. Uh, he was always yeah. our, my, he was my favorite um, extended family member because, like, he'd give you a shirt off his back, but, you know, he was busted for uh, stealing stuff and selling it across the border of Mexico. You know what I mean? Like, That's what he was busted for? Amongst other things, yeah, but like that's what got it did him in. They had a whole bunch of other charges they tacked onto it. You but. know what they used to call? You know what their nickname for him was when he like what? his street name, Ghost, because he first of all he was white, and for a long time the police couldn't catch him. They yeah, kept, they, it kept took like him. fifteen years of him doing Nothing fuck stopped. shit, and they, and every time they would arrest him, he would get off. I'm wondering if he was a snitch, but you know, you never know. That, you never know, but I'm saying, like, they tried for a long time to arrest him, and that's why they called him Ghost. I thought that shit was hilarious. I'm like, uh, damn. He was on Texas. He was on Texas's Most Wanted. He was no shit. Top, top ten Texas's Most Wanted for a long time. No shit. I never knew that. Yeah, he was I running from that. the law for like two years. Damn. Before they, find, so before, they, before they caught him, yeah. Mom never told me that part. I guess I was hmm. really young. That's you know? crazy. Yeah, great guy though. Taught me he um he always kinda like lightly, gently put me like kinda explained stuff to me in a way that I could understand. And um he it was a teach teachable moment because um he said something to me and I I was like ten at the time. I was like, Whatever, Uncle Randy, I don't want to go to jail like you. And he was like, You're right, you don't want to go to jail like like me. Um, because how, how do you put it? He was like, because the problem with jail is you can have all the sex you could ever want or don't want, depending on who your roommate roommate is. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, I bet he scared the shit out of you with that. Yeah, one. like that's all it took. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know that's 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 one thing I, I really am adamant about is like. I don't want to break the law. I don't like, want to break the law. I just don't want to go to jail. I'm, I, but that's the thing is like, I don't Some want to go to jail. Some laws are dumb as fuck. Some laws are dumb. You're right. But I really try my hardest to stay out of any jail or prison because I couldn't do it. And I'm admitted straight up. I've heard stories. I can't do it. I'm, I'm going to stay on this side. For me, it's uh, can I get away with it? it not that I want to go actively out breaking the law, but if there's a situation where I need to break the law, I need to figure out all the details. Like I need to not just the breaking of the law, but the but the the cleanup after. You know what I mean? Like the uh, what am I gonna say if I'm questioned? Um, where am I gonna you know like hide the evidence or whatever? You know, like I I'm not. I'm, I don't want to get involved is the, if it sounds like I could get caught pretty easily. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. And you want to know something, honestly? I believe that with the technology that we have today and all the resources that you can't really commit a crime and the police won't find out. Like a big crime. I'm sure they know about small crimes and some are like, they don't give a fuck. But with everything they have now, like facial recognition, all the cameras, We'd have been, we'd have been likely to get away with crimes have back they, in the day. Have they added license plate readers to Louisiana yet? Because they're everywhere in Ohio now, as of the, like the last year. 
license plate reader. Mean? They're little cameras. Um, uh, just like every like I don't know, like five miles, just I everywhere, just so anywhere on the road. And for a while, I was like, are these traffic cams? No, they're fucking license plate readers. To just mm -hmm. to figure out if you have tickets or warrants or whatever. Yeah, and well, and they said, oh, it's in case. It's in case if a child is kidnapped. Yeah, okay, y'all give a fuck about that. We clearly found out that y'all don't give a fuck about kids being kidnapped after the last couple of years. You know what I mean? Y'all don't give a shit you about that. You know what we need to talk about? You know what we need to talk about? Oh, my God. First of all, I don't think we have the license plate recognition, but I just Googled it in Louisiana. It doesn't look like it. Not yeah, they're yet. all over in Ohio. Oh, they just started popping up the past year. But you reminded me of something when we were talking about people don't care about the kids. Um, that documentary with the Nickelodeon star. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. been reading all about that. Well, Drake I've Bell. Been reading, I haven't watched it yet. Miranda, what is her name? Uh, Amanda, Amanda Bynes and whatnot. All those people. It was a bunch of them. Drake Bell did it and a couple of the other ones whose names like aren't really big. Because like yeah, some and, of the and who's were. the girl? Who's the blonde from uh, iCarly? Jennifer McCurdy? That's Jeanette Sorry. McCurdy. Jeanette, Jeanette McCurdy. McCurdy. I don't think she was on the... Um, no, but I'm just saying, movie. these people but are specifically people it. who have come out and said that there was some fuck shit going on. And then, I don't know, because I didn't really watch Nickelodeon as a kid. Even even when I, as I got older, I'm more stuck to Disney, which I'm sure Disney is on some fuck shit, too. But, like, some of the shit on Nickelodeon was always, like, kind of like... I'm like, this is, like... Lightly a little suggested. grotesque, you know, even mm -hmm. as a kid, even as a teenager, I was like, I don't want to watch this, you know, like, yeah. And honestly, I, watched, I did watch Drake and Josh a lot, but as, Drake and Josh as things, good. but like Victorious and iCarly and stuff like that, I was like, I don't know about all this, you know, yeah. And honestly, if you remember correctly, the reason we were geared more towards Disney was because we weren't allowed to watch Nickelodeon. We weren't allowed to watch Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. Yeah, but like, when I became a teenager, the rules were more laxed for we me. Even had, we even had some Disney Channel shows we weren't allowed to watch. We weren't allowed to watch Phineas oh, really? and Ferb. We weren't allowed to watch Phineas and Ferb. Girl. Phineas and Ferb, really? I don't know. My mom thought it was like trash or something, I guess. She said it was mom broader. Like, certain, like, mom didn't really like cartoons. There was, there was another one that she said we weren't allowed to watch, and I don't remember it. Right off the top of my head, but I remember at, like actively there were two shows that like I had to like sneak and watch because she. But Nickelodeon was a flat out no. We weren't SpongeBob. No, we weren't allowed to watch SpongeBob. She swore to God that shit was gonna rot our fucking brain. But you know what? Oh yeah, SpongeBob. And I kind of feel that way about SpongeBob. I don't let Jack watch SpongeBob. You know, you um, know I, I get I've it. always so felt I'll that way. Her, I'll give mom her props. She was right. She got one thing right. Not letting us watch Nickelodeon. Because whenever I would watch it, I would sneak and watch it, right? Whenever I would watch it, I'd be like, you know, these these jokes, they seem kind of grown up, but I'm kind of, I'm homeschooled, and I'm not even allowed to watch this channel, so maybe this is what teenagers are doing. Like, I don't know, like, right. maybe this is how teenagers make jokes. I don't know. So, I just didn't really It is know. how teenagers make jokes, but that doesn't mean that adults need to be pushing it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think... I think they'll take Nickelodeon off the network. Nah. They'll just they pivot. Will. They'll just pivot. There's too much. They have too much money. They'll pivot. I think they're going to boycott it. Who? I think people are just going to like stop watching it. The viewers. I think people are going to stop watching it. They're going to stop I mean, bringing the kids to it. Can you blame a whole entity, a brand name for the people that were in charge at the time? You know, just give it to them. So supposedly, one of the producers... I can't remember his name right now. One of the producers in his house, he had a room where some of the kids would go hang out and there would be like cool toys in there and stuff. And there was this clown picture on the wall. And the producer for Nickelodeon picked the clown picture up off the wall and when he read it, it said, to my friend, I think his name was Brian, but don't quote me. To my friend Brian, something, 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 John Wayne Gacy. The murderer? The murderer. The clown. Yeah, it was a picture of a clown. And so supposedly there might be a connection between the producers of Nickelodeon and John Wayne Gacy because apparently those two were friends. 
Who knows? But that's what one of the, the people. So Dan the- Schneider was friends with Gacy, is what you're saying? I don't think it was Dan. It was a different producer on Nickelodeon who was also friends with Dan. Was apparently friends, or at least had an autograph from John Wayne Gacy. And that was on that was on the documentary. That was on the documentary. So I think it's a if it's a little bit darker than people think. So that's why I think like it's gonna get really big. I think they're gonna take Nickelodeon off the network. And I think people are gonna start looking into uh, Disney a little bit closer too. Oh, and that's sure. gonna yeah, be, Disney's that's gonna the be a much bigger, much bigger lawsuit. Especially when you consider that like Britney Spears lost her fucking mind too, just like uh, Amanda Bynes did, and she you know? Britney Spears was the Mickey Mouse or like what do you call it? Um, a Mouseketeer. She's on the Mickey Mouse Club when she was really young. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. Stop. But did you know? That her little sister Jamie Spears got was pregnant. Was got who got pregnant? She got she was had her own show. It was like Zoe One Hundred One or something. She got pregnant yeah, yeah, at yeah. Like six, fifteen or sixteen. You know people. Yeah, Jamie Lynn Spears are the same age as me, so I remember hearing that that blew up. You know. Do you remember people speculated that it was Dan Schneider's baby, allegedly? No, that's I never heard people, that. Holy shit! That's what people think. Yeah. Oh yeah. my what? Like, does the baby look like him? Like, come on. Calm the fuck down. And uh, supposedly Dan was, like, giving him alcohol to all the kids on set. Like, they were drinking on set all the time, and he was trying to, like, massage them and stuff like that. It was, like, really dark. It was really dark. So... I mean, I'm not I saying anything necessarily bad, bad about Brittany. I'm just, uh, like, it's, it's facts. She shaved her head, and, ha- yeah, you're doing herbs. You know, like, she... Lost. I mean, she didn't do anything any different than Amanda Bynes, you know. Like they're they and they're both kind of broke down around the same time. So and like, you were both it, on it, the same fucking. And then you have Miley Cyrus, who kind of lost, went off the deep end there for a little bit. Um, I, I feel like she's kind of back now, but um, a lot of Disney stars when they kind of grow, become an adult, they kind of lose their shit for a little, uh, at least a little while. Some forever. Well, did you know, I don't know if you know this, but did you know, so you're speaking of Disney, that a long time ago when The Little Mermaid was first released and the movie had come out on the, on the picture, I remember, because I loved The Little Mermaid. You remember that. I wanted to watch it all the time. Mm -hmm. There, on the original cover, there was there, the, the big, um, palace in the back, like the Atlantis palace, it was gold and it had Ariel and it had like Ursula and stuff like that, right? Well, I remember vividly that the cover changed to something else. And I was like, I always wondered, I was like, oh, I wonder why they changed the cover. It's really weird. Do you know? It was because one of the artists for The Little Mermaid drew a penis on the cover. I knew you were about this. Yeah, Did you I know that? Yeah, 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 I heard brief, kind of like vaguely heard about it. Yeah. Um, Bro, there's so much stuff in Toy Story, too. Yeah, so I think I think people are going to take a much deeper dive, and I think we're. Do you remember Orlando, Orlando Brown from Ray? Yeah, Ray, yeah. Ray. he's another one that's lost his mind a little bit. Who's mm-hmm. kind of the things he said now has has said over the time have come out now, and when you look at him in the new with the new information we have, he's not lying. He just mm-hmm. seems crazy, you know, which doesn't make you not crazy. Which I mean, happened to Amanda, which happened to Britney. They started doing crazy stuff after, you know, they went through all that fucked up trauma, you know? But that doesn't necessarily right. mean they're lying. Right. But that's when... But, you know, Amanda Bynes has a conservatory ship just like Britney did. I didn't know that. I think she actively still has it. I'm, I may be wrong, but let me check real quick. Do, but, you, remember, do you remember when she tweeted to uh, Drake? She was like, you can murder my vagina. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, that was the last I'd ever heard from Amanda Bynes. Because everybody, like, kind of, like, dogged her for saying that. Like, it was, she tweeted it to him. Like, it was public, you know? (laughs) Then she kind of just disappeared after that. Oh, okay. So her conservatory, her conservatorship ended two years ago. Oh, Right around Britney. Too. They probably were like, "Yep, I don't want this in the in the paper." So let's go ahead and end that for you, for you pull a Britney, and everyone hates the parents. Right. 
Why is it women that are getting conservatorships? What's that about? Why aren't they getting more it's men? Because they're it's crazy easy, dudes, too. It's easier to convince people that women have lost their minds and don't deserve rights. Apparently. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, she's That's pregnant. Probably true. She can, you know, in Texas, a woman cannot divorce her husband while she's pregnant. Yeah, I know personally. I had to lie about what was going on with me and my baby mama because she was still married. In you're Texas. So, you're so ghetto, girl. <laughs> White trash, for sure. Trailer parky as fuck, for sure. But, um, so. Um, oh, well, the other thing is, uh, if a woman is married and she becomes pregnant in Texas, uh, the father is automatically put on the, the birth father. certificate. Or, the, I'm sorry, the <laughs> husband is automatically put on the birth certificate as the father. Even if he's not the father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, we had to lie. And, oh, no, she's not pregnant. You know? Like, you know, all kinds of shit while she was in the middle of her divorce. Which her divorce was pretty clean cut because he didn't want to be married to her either. They, it, was just, it was just a matter of money, you know? But, um... Yeah, it was a whole thing. But, so yeah, I think I think that's why people like more women get conservatorships than men. It's because it's just easier to convince people that they've gone crazy. Well, are they are these women agreeing to it, or is it against their will? You know, I didn't look too much into that. I think Britney's was against her will. I'm not sure about Amanda's. Right. I didn't even I'm know look into that because, like, it's probably also easier to convince a woman. To give up her rights, you know, like, because the women are always giving up something, their name, their body, you know, for a child or a woman or another man. Well, you know what I mean? They're always giving up something for somebody else, you know, so it's probably just, it's just the mindset, you know, so. Yeah. But I think in the next couple of years, there's going to be some heavy lawsuits with Nickelodeon and Disney. Allegedly, so, don't continue. this whole next couple of years, like there's a lot that needs to like that is we're in like the middle of a very transitional period. We might be going back to feudalism. Do you know what that is? Yeah. That's where um kind of where people don't run shit, land does. And people are gonna go to war over small pieces of land. Like not not governments, people. Like People are going to just take your shit. You know what I mean? Like, because of how expensive housing is, people are just like squatter rights are going to be, become a big thing. People are just going to like roll into your house with weapons and be like, we own the place now. Like, that was a big thing. And, but like, pre, like after, after, um, what is it? Uh, it like the, the Roman Empire fell, feudalism became a huge thing until the, uh, the British Empire became a thing. So there was a long time for that shit, a couple hundred years of that shit. Where it's like, I own this land now, kings. But it's a land of many kings, pretty much. Many as in many A M A N Y and many as in many M I N I. You know, many well, you kings. Know what, you know what it sounds like? What? Not my problem. Because I don't own land. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. People don't people who don't own land are just gonna uh stockpile weapons and then just go take it. You know what I mean? So like people like you, like your boyfriend, I don't know your boyfriend, but he might be he might be planning something, you know, not him specifically, but people like him, you know. That's so like yeah, I don't own land too. It's not gonna be a problem for me necessarily either. But I can't say that I wouldn't go take some, you know? Like I I mean, I definitely don't agree with it, but I can't say I blame people because I mean like the government does that shit all the time. Like they remember, I don't know if you heard about it, but like they'll just fucking build some shit on some native people's lands, even though the natives <laughs> don't want it, and then like pepper spray Those them on are the people you gotta worry about. The motherfuckers that feel like they're owed something. The Native Americans specifically, they feel like they were wrong. You gotta watch them. And they like live on they land. Were wrong, weren't they? Huh? They were wronged, weren't they? No, but <laughs> they feel that way. They but definitely like, were. The way I look at it is, and a lot of people argue with me this. You can argue all you want. You're not going to change my opinion. Uh, I know winning's that. winning. Winning's winning. You know what I mean? Like that's just what yeah. it is. You are either the best or you lose. Like that's how. It, that's how. That's what being uh, a king is. That's what being the best is. You know you. This, you 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 take over and you're like, look, these are the rules now. You know what I mean? Like there there have been so many times where, um, like like Hitler specifically is considered a war criminal, but had he won the war, 
he would have been king of the world. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's that's how history is. Yeah. You know? So yeah. there's a lot of conquering how going you on. Feel, America, there was a lot of conquering going on in the world. Right. Yeah. So um sure the Native Americans um like yeah. historically were treated unfairly yeah. but three people in your team. then when like you know i can't be i can't go around living and and listening to people who lost you know what i mean I can't, like right. people only have feelings when they lose you know and like we, so we, just, and win. just win and, and we've we've compensated like as uh, obviously as we've gotten as the government has gotten older and more wise and you know more advanced they they did uh, uh give out um what's it called um Reparations, Re reparations. You know, like 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 college and um, free housing and stuff like well, that. Have, for people they have reservations that are considered seceded from the nation. Right, sure. right. So, so I mean, we, def we definitely tried to like, you know, right our wrongs. Not that all wrongs can be right. I mean, not we because I wasn't there. That wasn't me. But right. I feel like the government has tried to give some reparation for what they've done to Native Well, Americans. and then it comes down to, it's like, it's just business, you know what I mean? At some point, like, those people uh, a couple hundred years ago have nothing to do with me, you know, here's what I can give you, but at the same time, I can't give you too much because then I will lose out on what I have, you know? So. And honestly, you know what? It's not even, that's not even what this is about, because you know what it is? It's the rich versus the poor. It's not yeah, the black versus the white. It's not it's the rich versus the poor. You notice, you notice. And I, feel like I can't help but feel like the the country would be way better off if we just told the rich to go fuck themselves and pay their fair share you and know. limit what they can get. Because like it's becoming the end of Monopoly, the game where like everybody has. There's this like one or two people that have hotels. And you're just trying to fucking make it past go, and you probably won't. And in real life, the difference is if you don't make it to go soon enough, you starve to death. You know, yeah. like we're almost there. You know, how many people I'm starting to see homeless people in Cleveland now. And it's start it's like it's like I mean Cleveland's already had like a bit of a homeless problem, but like you know where I live. I'm starting to see them where I live yes. in Cleveland. Yeah. What, the nice part of Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. It's bad, dude. It's fucking bad everywhere. And nobody does it, nobody wants to do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, the homeless population down here has always been pretty mad. For in Louisiana at least. So Well, it's but easier to be homeless when it's warm year round. Like, <laughs> like if you have a beach and stuff, you know, like definitely. Yeah. So I some think if we're gonna some would consider that a lifestyle more than just being homeless. Never there's like I'm eating these pickles, right? And they've got like fresh dill in it. But it's like loose. In it. What the fuck are you talking about? These pickles, oh, they're really, they're really good, but they got they've got like dill in it, like the actual seasoning. And I'm like, okay. Those that means those are like kind of homegrown pickles then. I gotta like pick around them. Dill is good. I, I put dill in my grits. Gotta like wipe it off a little bit. But I'm just over here snacking on pickles. I actually try to save them because I don't want to eat them all in one fucking day because that's like pretty common for me. You know, I still have a fucking. Save my pickle jars is, is uh, cups. Were you just drinking pickle juice earlier? Mm -mm. Apple juice. I like I said, I save my pickle jars as cups. Oh, interesting. I think I'm gonna save this one. This one's like a nice container. It's got a lid. Yeah, there you but go. But I don't. I don't do that. Tupperware. I got, I got like a lot of cups. Like I got a lot. We're of white trash. We're never gonna. No matter how much money. And assets we ob obtain, we will always be white trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's just stayed with you, bro. You ever had to boil water to take a bath? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever, sure. you ever, you ever had to bathe in Dawn dish soap? Yeah, because it's all you had. Like, I did that shit like last month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's bad for your skin, right? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You can double it and put it as laundry detergent too. Shit. Shit's you tight. Gotta be, like, you gotta be careful if you use it for uh Don Gisso. It'll fuck up your washing machine. You gotta use such uh, a little amount. You don't, like, you don't do it all like, the time. Like that much. You can't use much. 
you don't do it all the time, but when you're in between like shopping sure. and you're like, just use the last of your laundry detergent and you don't want to go yet. All right. Just use a little bit of fucking Dawn. You'll be all right. You'll be or fine. Or at the end of your paycheck, you're trying to squeeze it for another two days. Yeah. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do it, man. Like, it's rough around here. I'm so glad I'm past the um, paycheck to paycheck days. Like, I'm not that much above it, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely like, I'm like two days ahead always. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you paycheck to paycheck is like you're living paycheck to paycheck. And if you fall behind on paycheck to paycheck, that sucks. I've been there a lot. But now I'm like perpetually, like, I can make it two days without a payday. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. You want to hear some bullshit? I checked my insurance, right? So I have insurance through. My biological father, who I am not in contact with, and obviously, you know, I haven't been in contact with for like 16 years. And wow. so he's, yeah, like about as old as our been little that brother. long? Yeah. Yeah. So you were like little, little when you met at last song, then. What am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what he looks like. You know, I thought he had blue eyes, and mom told me he does not have blue eyes. He has brown eyes. Yeah, he looks like Carson, but darker colored. Like I, you know, I didn't even know that. Brown hair. Blue eyes. Brown beard, brown skin, like I'm telling you, if that man walked down the street, I would not know who he is. I mean, not a card, not a phone call, straight silent, sixteen years. Okay, yeah, so, he, just look, he just looks like a like I said, he looks like Carson, but just darker skin, like darker, so, darker I mean, fall colors. What do you call him? I don't know. Well, I mean, he's got the same coloring as me, but he's he looks like Carson. If that makes okay. any sense. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So I went to check my um, insurance because part of my mother's and my father's divorce was that he had to have insurance on all of us until a certain age. I don't remember the certain age. 26. Okay, so I checked it. You know, they took off my dental. I had... Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah Grayson, Grayson had to go get some dental work done uh, earlier this year. And he, yeah, they took him off too. They took us both. Wow, not they even took a everybody. phone call. Carson off. Helen, yeah. Not even a phone. I couldn't get a fucking. Phone. You know what? I don't give a shit because I've been at my job long enough. I can get benefits through them. Like I don't give a shit. I'm a grown up. But you know what I thought about? I was like, what if I just called them and was like, hey, why'd you take me off your dental plan? Like I'm not gonna do it. But I just thought about it. I was like, what would he say? I don't have his number. I can't just like call him. But, like, what would he do? I'd be like, I'd embarrass him. I'd be like, what the fuck? Did you lose your job, man? You can't afford dental anymore? What? Are you tight on funds? Give Like, you haven't given me shit for 16 years? You take me off your dental? I don't ask for a lot. I don't know, man. Because I'm of the opinion that you don't got to be taking care of your kids once they're adults. Like, um, yeah, for the most part. Help them out, but don't fucking take care of them. Care of I'm, I'm of the opinion. I'm of the opinion that Jack's going to have to figure college out. That's not for me. Now, if I have it, I'll have it. But if I don't, I'm not going to stress about it. That's you the one that wants to go to college. That's gonna, got, not got nothing to do with me. Furthermore, college is a scam right now anyway. So, you know, like, I, I just don't believe in, I don't know. It's I'm, I'm tired you of, know like, what? I'm tired of everyone telling me as a father and a man that I have to take care of all these other grown people like child support. Oh, you gotta pay child support. Why? If she can't take care of him while he's at her house, then she don't deserve custody of her child. You know what I mean? Because he eats just fine in my house and I pay child support. So fuck but, off. I'm tired of everybody you know telling what? me to take care of these no, fucking you know adults. What? I can get behind that. You're right on that. But when you take it on a personal level to my situation... The fact that I've never asked for anything, I've never called him, I've never shown up at his house, okay? So never what do you need from him? That's the nothing. other thing. It's like, if he's never done anything for you, what do you care if he continues to do nothing for you, you know? Like, I mean, I him. don't care. It's just the fact of the matter. It's just like, you, could, you couldn't have just kept me on your fucking dental family? The, dude, like, the, the dude's dirty and grimy. We know this. He never spoke like, to his not kids. Even in my life. That's I'm just saying, he's, he's dirty and grimy. So, like, what do you expect, you know? Like you why even funny, why dude. even let it why even let it take up space in your head? You know, he's you dirty know, and grimy. He always has. But you want to know what's really funny? Is that <laughs> I don't think the insurance is actually through him because it's got his wife's name on it. 
<laughs> well, you know, you know, in uh, Mom's custody battle with over you guys with him, um, one of the stipulations that he really pushed for was that he would give uh, he would he would give Mom sole custody and let her dictate the the custody exchange and everything, the the visitation and the scheduling, if he didn't have to pay child support. Which again, I don't think you should. But like, I'm not giving up. I have 50 50 custody and I pay child support. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not giving up my fucking. He grimy as fuck, bro. Fuck that guy. And he also wanted to be able to claim us on his taxes every year. Yeah, that was another thing. He Even wanted to claim you Yeah, grimy. It was all about money to him. He, you guys, like, were, you you guys were a paycheck. That's all it was. You know, and or, or inexpensed. You know, so fuck him. Fuck him, whatever. I feel, like, I feel like if he had been involved at all in my childhood, I wouldn't have cared because I'm grown now. But you didn't give me nothing. And now you just took me off your dental plan. Whatever, bro. <laughs> what? Never, never, never tried to contact you guys on Facebook or nothing. So, okay. no, and I never tried. And honestly, I caught the vibe. You put it down. I'm picking it up. I'm grown. I didn't call you on my 18th birthday, not that you'd remember. But I didn't. I didn't call you. Wait to my even, even my <laughs> own father, because I have a different dad than you guys. Um, even my own father looked me up on Facebook. Now he didn't have nothing nice to say. <laughs> did I ever tell you about that? Yes, you did. We'll have to you talk about it sometime. We're running out of time, but mm -hmm. basically the gist of it was like he was mad about how much he owed in child support, and I'm like, "Uh, nice to meet you, Dad." Like. <laughs> I've never met you before doing? in my life. And you're business about how much you owe? Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, uh, people up. always come at me. Like, if I've learned anything from the fight or I had this past weekend and with me talking about my fucking dad, is people always come to me and talk to me any type of way without saying hello first. So, we ain't doing that no more. People need to get some fucking manners. Say hi before you start talking shit to me. <laughs> but uh, I think that's been our time because I got to go do my other show with Jack here in about half hour. So, All right. um, good talk and um, yeah, um, yeah. catch you next time. Oh, my birthday is next month, and you're gonna um, are, oh, you're gonna roast me, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. on that. I put you in the group and everything. So let me go ahead and pl do my plugs before I forget. Um, April twenty first. Uh, everybody who can see me live on YouTube, uh, get roasted by my close friends and family, uh, for free, totally free. Uh, this is my happy birthday, the, the comedy roast of Cole Clayton and catch me tonight there in about a half hour, uh, doing every other weekend meals with my son, Jack. Uh, and we do that every other Saturday. And every other Monday, last Monday, and not this coming Monday, but the next, we do, I do uh, Last Minute History with my buddy Atlas Novak, and every Tuesday, Hammered and Cheese, and that's my bread and butter, so please watch that if you watch anything. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Peace out. <laughs>